Hi everyone, today we are going to do something a little different. It will be this painting. Uh, it is a Bob Ross. I know this is a little unusual, but it'll, it will be only appearing every so often on this channel. Anyhow, I hope you are going to enjoy this little uh, tutorial. I'm going to uh, put it uh, in uh, fast motion for the most of it anyway. Uh, in the meantime, well, enjoy and uh, I see you soon. This will be the finished painting. And uh, to paint today, we are going to uh, mask. Well, as you can see, I have masked my, my board. Then I came in to cut around with a, a Stanley knife. I'm going to use titanium white, black, uh, phthalo blue, uh, Van Dyke brown, burnt sienna, Alison crimson, uh, green, it's sub green, uh, yellow ochre, and uh, a yellow, that's a lemon yellow. We're going to use different kind of brushes, not necessarily Bob Ross. Um, I use maybe the one inch. Uh, and then uh, we use just random uh, round brushes, flat brushes. I use uh, a, a fan brush as well, although we are going to change because this one is quite big. Uh, uh, we are also going to use a rigger for the finer uh, strokes. And um, um, I'm using a... Um, Filbert as well, sorry, couldn't find my word. So, as I said, I masked um, around and I cut uh, the shape of, um, we could say it's a window, out with a Stanley knife. Then I'm going to take this part away to paint. I left it to show you. So I could have done it prior, but I wanted to show you what I have done this is masking tape and sticks quite well so at some places I had a little trouble to get it off anyway so we take the tape off uh, it looks like um, I didn't cut at the board which is good so this is just um, a, um, a canvas not a canvas board it's it's on cardboard canvas glued on cardboard just a cheap canvas that I bought to do the sort of things and there we are so we're left with that window shape that we are going to paint over at some places later on you know proper Bob Ross style I'm sure you you've seen that before um, so it's not a just a one inch brush I'll come back to what I was saying later on uh, and I put some liquid around instead of using the magic white that Bob Ross uses uh, I use some liquid you can see in the back I haven't said uh, I did just a, a quick pencil sketch there yeah see uh, most will disappear when I put the white on top of it but uh, it's just there so I can remember uh, where to put my first lines in so I cover everything with um, liquid and on top of that I will put some uh, white titanium white and that will do exactly the same uh, it will have the same purpose as the magic white of Bob Ross um, all the magic white does is um, slow down the drying and um, been able to really mix the paint on the canvas so it gives us a slick portion so I don't put any on the mountains or very little uh, it's mainly in the sky and in the water down below so with that same brush we dip in, in a little bit of alizarin crimson and uh, 
and now we're starting to go faster. So, uh, anyway, you have, I know in the UK uh, and in the States you have loads of Bob Ross and other style and loads of painters who paint in this style, so it's not really a, a teaching video, this is just a, a quick tutorial to show you that I do sometimes enjoy to paint, paint in this style and, um, well, some of you still like it. Uh, I can bring some <clears throat> little different as I don't necessarily stick with all the Bob Ross material so that could give you some ideas as well. So it's just for you to enjoy and see something different. Um, as you can see, uh, I think all the rest will be in uh, fast motion now. So I'm going to add a cloud in there. I use a filbert brush. Uh, I load mostly on top of the brush. Make the shape that I want. Fairly easy. Uh, and then we smooth out the bottom. If we need a little bit more color, then we add a bit more color underneath to get a second layer in. As you can see, I leave the tops quite crisp, and that will make a big difference in in how the cloud will look. You can come back at all times to reshape it if you want to. So there's the side of my mountain. I want to have that cloud coming back out on the other side. I'm smoothing, I'm smoothing the the cloud now with uh, a. Um, round brush, soft round brush. This canvas is quite small so I can't use big brushes on it. But we adapt Bob Ross style with anything really. You know I believe Bob Ross style could um, well work outdoor as well um, in plein air painting. Now I use a flat brush to do the mountain and for this I will wipe out uh, the excess of paint so I can go with a thicker, I, I mean so I can go with an, uh, another paint on top of it without dirtying it too much. Uh, that This first layer needs to be very thin so it's not always mentioned in the other videos but all I'm interested in is the outside, and that's what Bob Ross says a lot, uh, is the outside um, of the shape of the mountain. Inside, I want to remain very, very, very thin. If not, uh, you can't get that snow effect uh, on top of it. Uh, that snow breaks while you apply it. Uh, and this is the secret. Be very thin to start with, and then your snow will break, and um, you'll be able to do a good job. So add a little bit of white, smooth out below there a little bit, smooth out the bottom of the mountain to uh, get it integrated in the painting. Um, now you can just I just add a few bits in the sky there. So the uh, palette knife, Bob Ross palette knife is too big for this painting. So I will use a mixture between the, the, the brush and a, a traditional triangle shaped uh, knife, which works just as well. The pressure needs to be very, very light, very light touch the canvas just slightly so I want more paint on some bit some parts and obviously diffused paint as I'm coming down and I want to have those breaks as well and you only get these breaks in two ways by having the underpainting quite dry and no pressure when you come back on top of it here we go so now we shape the mountain the way we want to, add the highlight 
on one side and a shadow on the other and there you have a quick mountain it's a very easy way to uh, create mountains quick and easy so for that we add a little phthalo blue and a white to add now all these shadow shapes be careful not to cover all the dark especially in the shadow and keep the shadow thin There you are. And just that easy, you have a good looking mountain. So now, as always, we smooth out the bottom in strokes. The, the light side goes in the same direction and the shadows out to the left goes in the same direction as the shadows. Now I'm uh, drawing in a hill the back hills there'll be two back hills uh, and I will uh, mix a bit of blue and uh, green I'm after something um, a bit turquoise a light green blue green um, to put that first hill in because it's quite far so we don't want something high in chroma or even something that well that wouldn't fit it's as easy as that so blue green I didn't go blue completely because well there's not that much depth so and now we are adding a second hill darker so I go quite dark, I add blue, alizarin crimson and the sap green for my second hill. And then we play with colors, a bit, a few more greens, light greens to um, painting some far trees. To get a little bit more detail in there. And there we're having our line, so I will stop here our water line and we will build up a little bit of land I'm just going to do it with a flat brush so I've got my land coming here to the side try to be straight um, so now darken it and put a little bit of uh, so I use that uh, flat uh, brush like a knife I put thick paint on it and then I uh, just drag it over what I what I've done but I need some ridges in there for the highlight to stick out when I'm ready to put the highlights in I just realized I forgot to put the water in but never mind it will actually help with the shadows to put it in now I do the water with uh, phthalo blue and um, and some green, sub green mixed in. I'm gonna leave a little um, gap in the middle to do to give a shine to the water. So in this little bit will just serve as a shine on the water. Just effective. So on the front I just mount my. Uh, my grass patch I will have there with my trees. Here I put the um, the hills, the color in the hill for, as a reflection. But you will see towards the end I'll have to darken it. It wasn't quite dark enough. For now, it is in there. Now we will do the waterline or the highlights first. For that I'll take uh, burn sienna and white and get some highlights on top of those um, of that earth which will be um, 
taken out a bit once I put some bushes in. We'll see. Waterline, a bit of blue and white. So this knife is not ideal for the waterline because it's very bendy, but we'll still manage. Don't take just pure white. Mix it in with your watercolor a little bit. It just looks a little better, I think. So now we're going to make the trees, this, the um, evergreen, and we'll leave them uh, dark with no highlight as they're far away. So we need some texture still in there. They're very quick and effective again, way to, to do evergreens. I decided to put a few in the picture. That one can be a bit bigger as well. I could have gone even bigger if I wanted to, but anyway, it's it would will appear not to to in front in the front. So there we go. Now uh, add bushes in on top of it and uh, towards the land. I'll make sure. I'll have enough paint to create again some uh, ridges so my highlight will stick on it later on or oh, now <laughs> I'll um, put a tiny bit of medium uh, on the highlight so the paint the thinner paint will stick on the thicker paint underneath in this method uh, often have the question but should we not go uh, thin first and thick after meaning uh, less diluted and um, more oily on top but it doesn't really matter when you paint a la prima in a la prima it, you paint it all in one session so everything will dry together so it doesn't doesn't make any any odds how you apply the paint So there we go. So we have the further trees back now. Let's take that tape off. It was quite a bit of a struggle. So I cut through that a bit quicker. So I think I spent at least a good five minutes trying to get the tape off. <laughs> there we go. Magic. The magic of uh, the cinematics, eh? Okay. So next, we build in a little foreground which will come out the frame looks good and again the same way that we would use the Bob Roth method loading the brush onto one corner and so you get some nice lacy effects coming out there on the side trying to stay straight on the bottom um, trying not to go too crazy I always overdo this stuff. Now we are going to put the highlights on top. Again, for the highlights, I have a touch of medium on it, but not much. So I want a bit of everything, some greens, some yellows, some sort of just vary the colors. Um, tapping in some grass there, having to turn the brush around because the bottom of the easel was in my way, nevertheless. As long as you've got an effect, you tap the brush flat into the paint and then onto the canvas and there you are, you've got some nice grass effects. Okay, so clean a bit that palette. I'm a bit messy, aren't I? There we go, it's much nicer, a bit yellower. Don't cover everything, leave some darks, yeah. The uh, light comes from the right, so you cover mostly the right side. A couple of blades of grass, don't overdo it again. And uh, now we are going to put in the trees.
They are silver birch, I believe that's what they called. So I'm using the rigger now with quite a bit of um, medium. The medium I use is green for oil. It is an odorless and um, non-toxic medium. So add as many branches, take your time there if you want to. I try to go quick, the purpose of the video, I don't want to bore you guys. So put all the branches on and then we are going to build the dark side and the highlight to the right. So I use that flat brush and coming down to one side. Normally I should be doing it from right to left but that meant I'd be in the camera, in the shot I mean, and you wouldn't have seen what I'm doing. So I'm doing it left to right, it doesn't matter to me, it's not as neat, uh, but it will do for purpose of this video. So I go in first and then with a cleaner white paint I go in a second time in to highlight some bits more than others to have really that birch effect. And then we're gonna add to the right side of that a few shadows blue shadows that I'm doing here now. That is gives it a neat effect really to to round up that tree. So this tutorial is nearly finished. I had to come back as I said uh, to the front here to get it a little darker my reflection in the water. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial anyway a quick one just to show I'm still around and there will be more to come soon. So thank you very much and uh, I'll see you soon. This was Boris Hugonel. Enjoy your painting.